Welcome to the Tuesday Review. I'm Nathan, as always, joined by Callum and James in the studio. How you going, guys? Yep, good. good. Thank you. Good. Also joined by Alan as well. Howdy. How are you doing, Alan? I'm very good, thank you. Very Thanks good. Uh, this is just a nice and easy one this week. We're doing a review roundtable, yeah. just talking about what we've seen lately. Um, so yeah, who wants to start? Who wants to start? Well, wants before to we get started, I'll just quickly, uh, some housekeeping for the listeners. Our podcast platform, hosting platform is shutting down. Shout Engine is shutting down. Um, we Not losing a lot, to be honest. Shout Engine. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's probably a blessing in disguise. Look, but It was free. Yeah, so no, purpose. exactly. I mean, it, I've, we've been using it for five years, so they did the job. But anyway, the point is that uh, we'll be transferring to another uh, hosting platform, and hopefully, there's no interruption in listeners getting the podcast. But if we go dark for a week or something, it's just because we're switching over, or the RSS feed hasn't. Uh, Updated if you yet. see an emergency YouTube link or something like that, you'll know why. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, just keep an eye on, on our social media and I'll, uh, you know, uh, I'll probably mention it again next week. Um, but yeah, if, if, if we... Also, the Christmas is coming up and New Year. So, if we pro- we're planning to just keep doing the show. But if we take a break, uh, just like I said, keep yeah. an eye on the social media. If we go dark for a week... We'll keep you all updated. Yeah, we'll keep you updated. Um, also very quickly, I don't like to do corrections because, you know, one episode is just do that episode, then forget about it because I, otherwise I'll think about it for years, which trust me, I do. But last week I said that, uh, Peter Jackson's, uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy was the first live action Lord of the Rings. Oh, the Russian adaptation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is not true. There was a Russian yeah. adaptation. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's on YouTube. Go watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, yeah. So review roundtable. We haven't done done one of these in a while because of lockdown. Um, it's just going to be easy breezy. Talk about whatever we've been watching. Um, who wants to go first? Uh, I, don't I guess go uh, first. I don't really. I guess we'll start in uh, from my center of the board here. We'll start in clockwise. So maybe we'll go Callum first. Uh, okay. Well, I've been watching um, South Park. I guess to start off with uh, the famous cartoon. Uh, who have just released their post-COVID special a couple of weeks ago at this point, uh, which is just a take on yeah. But what's maybe going we'll on. Like, we'll talk about that when it's finished, though. Maybe. Yeah, I'm saying that, like yeah. I've been watching that, but in terms of films, uh, I've been watching. I've been really interested in political movies, so I guess I've been in kind of a Nixon mood. I don't know. Mm. It's been weird. Um, I watched The Post by Spielberg, an awesome movie, mm. uh, and then I watched as well. All the President's Men. Um, yeah. I can't remember the director's name, but the screenplay is uh, by William Goldman. Yeah. Uh, master wordsmith, William Goldman. And um, it made me realize just how much I love that political office like drama. Yeah. Especially All the President's Men where it's like... Such a good movie. The, you know, every scene has a clue that takes them to the next the next place and you know i love that kind of that methodical mystery solving element yeah. which you kind of get a little bit of that in the post the post, well, the, the is, post like a is more of a sequel yeah, the, to to all the president men but it's um uh, yeah yeah that's right but it's um yeah it's a lot a lot different of it's a, a lot more modern yeah it's not really a thriller no it's more like a character drama yeah, yeah. Uh, about running a, a newspaper where there's a legal threat which is which kind of ties into the current political climate and like the notion of uh journalists being (laughs) mishandled uh threatened um you know news sources not being that um that neutral anymore there's this whole notion of what it means to be a journalist what it means to be a news distributor what Uh, news even is anymore yeah i mean you look in classified as entertainment yeah julian assange maybe yeah that's what i was gonna say like julian assange uh is considered by many people to be a journalist uh that's an interesting conversation outside of the scope of this show. Yeah. But so it's interesting to watch these movies now where they struggle with the same questions, especially in um, especially in The Post, mm. uh, where they say repeatedly the right to pub... The only way to maintain the right to publish is to publish, is, is, uh, which I, f- I find a fascinating argument. Is The Washington Post uh, the one that slogan is democracy dies in darkness? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's now owned by Jeff Bezos. Which exactly. Is another which I was, was, was going to no, say, it's, it's like, it starts off as this noble idea yeah. and then now it's just like, well, they just... It's owned by a, it's owned by a trust which the, of which the owner is Jeff Bezos, but yeah. he, is, he has been very hands-off. 
he doesn't get involved. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, but you know I, lo- I, mean? I personally like, love the Washington Post. They've yeah. never... Every article connected to Amazon or Jeff Bezos, it has a disclaimer that actually says, you know, we yeah. are technically owned by this mm. trust or whatever. But anyway, they, they are... I would call them an independent um, newspaper. Mm. But uh, so, yeah, it, it's interesting to watch these political-based uh, movies and see the reflections of the now, if that makes sense. Because mm. it's funny, times change, but not a lot changes in the conversations we have. You look in the 60s, there yeah. were still conversations about race, not so much identity we, now, but certainly the political divide yeah. was almost as stark as it is now. I mean, technologically, we've come so far, but like so- socially, socially no. like not politically... Not really. It's yeah, kind politically, of, uh, politically we have kind of devolved. No, I, was I, gonna say, I think politically we, we're way worse than we used to be. Probably uh, well, even in the sixties. I think politically we were going all right up until you know Obama was president, and then there was obviously well, a bit of a slide. Yeah, the internet, the internet really <laughs> screwed yeah. everything. Well, up. I read Russian an, troll funds, no, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I was and, reading an article from the Atlantic, uh, which which made this interesting point that the GOP lasted from when it was founded until twenty twelve. And then it stopped being the GOP. And we can say, you can look at the crazies from I mean, the old GOP from pre-2012. Yeah, I mean, the GOP has still... been shit for 60 plus years, but I mean, yeah. yeah. But I thought that was interesting where like people can, like you can chart yeah. where it officially There's dissolves into this kind of now, neo-Trump. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. my point is I've been watching these great political movies uh, and it reminded me of the trial of the Chicago 7 because it was the post in that movie with the trial of the Chicago Out 7 of the being, recent ones, being yeah. the most recent. And like, what an outstanding film that is. You know, we did a review on it, I believe. The post? Yeah, uh, no, the trial of the Chicago 7. I think we talked about it. I think we mentioned it briefly in a review roundtable one time. But I think that uh, Hollywood needs that more. I think that we definitely need uh, consumers of film. Definitely need to be... But, I mean, it's the same conversation we have every week. They don't make movies like that anymore. Yeah. And the one time they did with um, Trial of Chicago 7, it was on Netflix because they're not going to yeah. put that at the movies. Um, also, yeah, I mean, how many... Yeah, I, like, I don't think that the, a movie like that was going to spark a... No, but I think we need movies that hold a mirror up to ourselves. And when I say yeah. ourselves, I don't mean us guys in the we, studio. Like, I mean, yeah, just like society as a whole. We always talk about though. There's a lack of mature, like, themed... Yeah. Dramas. Uh, and dramas and, you know, courtroom and political thrillers and all that. Um, and the few that come out are, like, Netflix or very low budget. And I guess this kind of ties into me watching South Park again. Because uh, I, I started rewatching the TV show from the beginning a while ago. Mm. And I kind of picked it up again. And it's You've only like, got, what, like 30 seasons? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's really interesting because it's a bit more political than like something like The Simpsons. Oh, yeah. But uh, even in the early seasons, it still had that satirical bite. It was a little more childish than it is now. Mm. But it's fascinating when you watch the, the last few movies they released, the couple of movies they released, and the... Um, the specials. The, the specials. Yeah. Man, they haven't lost it at all. Like, the, the satirical um, mm. sharpness that they have is so great. Well, one thing, like, f- a couple years ago, I was worried about South Park because... They South- still have some issues. Yeah, South Park has always been, like, oh, we make fun of both sides kind of thing. Um, but and, when when one side creators, is really kind yeah, of... <laughs> yeah, the, there's the, an imbalance The, the, the creators, Matt and Trey, are, like, self-professed libertarian Liberty, yeah. so you know fence sitting at its finest <laughs> um and so you know when i was young i would watch south park and it's like oh it's kind of risky and dangerous yeah. and 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 crude and then i found out later that it's like both right wing and left people love south park because for different of the reasons whole, for different reasons yeah. and that kind of rubbed me the wrong way i'm like and there was a there was a point there was a season of South Park a couple of years ago where I was like I think Matt and Trey have entered their get off my lawn phase where yeah. they've gone a bit too into the whole libertarian like conservative side, but these last few specials about COVID I think have been really on well, it's, point it's for been the an most in- part. It's been an interesting few years politically. Yes, you know, so I think maybe that helped focus yeah. people's people's thoughts yeah i think though that, like i remember just briefly it was one standard episode we was talking about it was talking about like it was randy was uh, like re- renovating houses or something yeah 
white couples are renovating yeah, houses. Yeah, white couples are renovating oh, houses. Yeah, yeah, no one yeah. cares about the whites anymore, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, whatever. That's, they had you know, that, that's they had one of their all-time best jokes. And one of the all-time best jokes was they're trying to... Someone, it was something. It was an allegory about racism. Mm. And one of the guys was like, it's a load-bearing wall. <laughs> yeah, they, needed, like, they wanted to demolish a wall. Heart, so <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they, that's that's sharp, right. They wanted to demolish a wall, but it was important to the house. And the yeah, the metaphor was if you get rid of their identity, it's all, like that's yeah. like the load-bearing wall. But like, like they, I, think, I think James is right. Yeah, they still have a lot of problems with you know fence sitting libertarianism but they still they still can be quite good but yeah it's the reason I say they, that, they are their jokes are good and the the right and you know for, if you, for the last if it is a show that does episodes. appeal to both audiences if you do it justice enough you might just be able to sway some people just a little bit yeah exactly especially yeah. with like I their mean, take on don on donald trump was hilarious yeah i mean it's not their it's not their job to like sway people but i do think at this point in time it's dangerous for someone to fence sit or to be well, like well, oh you're I both mean, sides it's of not the sort of what, i mean both sides I, of the it's sort of, i mean just more like people are more than happy these days just to sit in an echo chamber no yeah. like, and it's like if you're at least they're exposed to something that's not just 100 percent their opinion you know what i mean yeah but so I, I, I don't know i think that what makes south park so special at least in this current uh time period of its history is that if you compare it to something like The Trial of Chicago 7, yeah. for example, a live-action drama has a political bent baked into it. So, like, Aaron Sorkin, for example... But that movie had a message. Yeah, that's what or, I mean. I'm like, I'm like a, but if you, look at South, if you look at South Park, the reason South Park can be such a great show and why people from all political sides love it mm. is because it is from Matt and Trey's political... Yeah. You know, their, their lens of looking at things. Yeah. But at its core... It presents a kind of truth that all people somehow find humor in or accuracy in for different reasons. But I, lo- I love the idea that I can be laughing at um, Mr. Mackey as Donald Trump. Yeah. Mackey? No, no Garrison. No, no, um, Mr. Garrison. Garrison. And Mr. then, Garrison. but, I, you know, the, the conservative people will be laughing at, I don't know, um, Randy saying something stupid or whatever. I'm like, they kind of miss the message, but they, in- they take it in. I was I was reading a, mm. a thing on Reddit about it, and I don't like, think I don't think conservative and right wing people are that smart. No, but the, it, no, it but kind it's of all when you yeah. when you watch this thing that you think is not politically threatening, yeah, you absorb yeah. the messaging, people, not the messaging, but you absorb a uh, different way of looking I don't at know it. If that's, I'm not like I'm not saying I agree with their messaging 100 percent because you know obviously I'm not a libertarian. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not in the center. Um, but I do agree with Callum. I think any time that people are open to watching entertainment, they normally with messages they normally wouldn't. Yeah. It's still a good thing, That's, even though if yeah. like, I even suppose I phrased it, it awkwardly. Also, but it is a double edged sword as yeah. well. So I phrased like, it awkwardly because mm. the, the the opposite side is there are progressives who are going to be exposed to some conservative messaging. Maybe which, yeah, that might rub them the wrong way. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm excited for the uh, post-COVID part two special. I'm looking yeah. for and the what and six more making, seasons and the ten something more movies they got 10, coming out. Yeah, yeah. twelve more mo- special. And they're making movies another and... video game apparently. Oh really? Cool. Uh, the video games have been they, op- good they opened. I haven't up, played them, but you guys they, said yeah. they're. They really opened good. up their own video game studio. Oh, I'm pretty really? sure. Yeah. yeah, they get published by Ubisoft. Yeah, like uh, they've got like six hundred. What is it? Six hundred million dollars worth of South Park Entertainment on the way. So I, it, I excited. I, I I mean, it's been. It's been a long time since South Park started, but like considering how bad Simpsons got after you know ten or so seasons, how bad you know Family like Family Guy's still going. I don't know who watches it anymore. <laughs> um, and all the, you know most shows that go for such a long time they lose after, energy. They, yeah. yeah, South Park's the only one where it's like after so such a long time. Well, it's still I, I think that it, it good. did. South Park did start to lose energy like I don't know ten years ago. I, I just stopped hearing about it, like, for a while. You just Maybe didn't hear was much about South Park. Yeah. But now they're kind of back and yeah. people are I mean, talking about it. I mean, they got the material. It. Well, yeah it's, yeah. A, yeah, it's that whole thing about, you know... <laughs> Reflections of reality. Yeah. Yeah. And they write episodes right up to the wire, so it's like, when there's a lot going on. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, got, also, that's also another reason it's so great, is that, they, like Nathan said, they literally write to the very, wire. It's very impressive how they just make it in, in a week before it airs. Well, they had, they like, they wrote... And, well, the, the infamous it. election episode, they were writing and making it the day of the yeah, election. and you can tell they didn't think he was going to win, because that episode... Just like what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's that. That's about me done. Yeah, um, I'm into political office based stuff at the moment. Mm. So, I'm have really... you seen Three Days of the Condor? No, you should watch that. It's like a political thriller. You'll like it. I also watched Eids of March. Eids of March. Oh, sorry, that's a good movie with uh, the baby goose. Yeah, that's a good movie. I yeah. like that movie. Yeah, really nice. I tell that. Yeah, I tell Philip Seymour Hoffman. God bless him. Yeah, George Clunes. Yeah, 
James. Either. What you got for us, James? Oh, you want me to go? Yeah. I mean, I've I've got so much stuff. I don't know. I mean, right, should well, we do the game where you pick a decade? All right. <laughs> let's go 90s. Uh, uh, let's Or do you want to think about it and we'll hear what Alan has to say? Yes. Yeah, I'll yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go. Because I've, I've got go. very little to say. For some <laughs> reason, I can't finish like shows and movies right now. Uh, what happens? I go through periods. And watch, watch a couple of short films. Yeah. Like, watch, think, 90, watch a few 90-minute movies, get you back in the horse. Like, when I'm with you guys, we watched Dune, you know, went through that nice and easy. Watch Matrix 1 and 2. Happy with that. But if I'm alone, I don't know, something just comes over me after a while, I watch a bit of it. I just kind of stop. And um, it's been troubling me because I do like to watch some movies. It's a weird feeling of like you're you're kind of bored. You want to relax. You don't want to do anything. You'd think, oh, put on a movie. But there's that extra step of like, I can't. What do I choose? I, I can't think, be bothered paying attention. I, I and then think, you kind of lose interest. I think what you need is some sort of light movie. All right, you, you, your attention your attention span is not the best. I'm not going to suggest you go watch Dune or like something heavy. It's, it's also it's easier to binge a series as well. Mm. Watching, like you yeah. you'll watch one episode and you'll end up binging the whole thing. Whereas if you're like, oh, there's a 90 minute movie. Oh, that's too long. Even though you'll end up watching more. It's psychological. Or yeah. the watch watch something comfort food like. Role I models mean, is my comfort food. Fanboys <laughs> is my comfort food. If I'm really not feeling it, I'll put one a movie that I know very well on, and I can just sort of sit and veg in that. Yeah, movie. you know you're gonna like know, it. You don't have to take. A I don't. Risk I don't have to be paying attention the whole time because I know the beats mm. already. You know yeah. what I mean? Do you still game a lot? Uh, not as much as I used to, but I'm I'm still play, playing some games. I think the big issue is um, now that I'm back in Melbourne is we were obviously supposed to move into a new house around Christmas, mm. and that's been pushed out to possibly April. And my room has now been... There's no TV in there anymore. Oh. All my consoles have been packed up. Oh. Um, all I've got to rely on is my PC. And, you know, sitting up and watching a movie on a PC is uh, not... No. Nah, nah. It's probably yeah. it's the other thing that's kind of bringing me down. Like, I, yeah. you, know, you get tired of that eventually and you're like, well, I'm just going to go to bed or whatever. Yeah, no, then it makes sense yeah. that you're not watching. That's anything. right, and we've got you covered. Yeah. <laughs> so, hopefully in the new house, the projector will be 130 whole inches. Well, you know, yeah. we started this whole projector journey... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alan, Alan watching projection is like oh, Alan I have to get the, one. Alan caught the bug. Yeah. Well, I wanted like, one for ages, in my new house. but you guys oh. showed me it in like you yeah. Know, and uh, and uh, uh, silent producer of the show Christian, he's uh, he's thinking about oh we were always meant to have a projector. Yeah, meant to have a projector. I remember one time he told me that uh, he he has a TV that's close to his bed, and he was like it's the same thing. It's no, it's, it's really not. not. I was like no, <laughs> it's not. no, no. So, so anyway, yes. Yeah. So this one will have you know. Nice little Dolby Atmos speakers in the roof. And we'll just never leave your house, Alan. You know that, yeah, right? So we can... That's the first thing we want to watch is Mission Impossible Fallout. You know, so we yeah, can hear nice. the helicopter scene and, you know, hear it. Oh, no, no. Yeah. We'll, we'll bring over the 4K Dunkirk or Inception. Anyway, or it's, I'm sorry, but it's also tradition to watch Star Wars in 4K. Yeah. So we have to... That'll probably be on to watch 4K as well. 77. Uh, as long as you've I'll been bring cut. That. Yeah. 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 Yeah, done. Um, so you haven't been watching too much. No. Um, I did end up watching... Um, DreamWorks How to Train Your Dragon again. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that was a nice overall, like, you That's know, a good, film. A, a good film for children and then something, you know, you can enjoy as an adult as well. Well, I most think, Pixar movies are that way. I, you know, it's DreamWorks. I, yeah. Oh, I think, thing. you know, people... Uh, it's nice having something in DreamWorks that's not Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Shrek is its own thing. Shrek is a love for Yeah, life. DreamWorks pre- peaked with Shrek. <laughs> oh, they've got some other good ones. Yeah, no, that's about it for um, Alan, is it? Yeah, and I, I did start on How to Train Your Dragon 2. So, have you guys watched all of them? I've, I've only seen the first one. I've certainly seen the first one. Is the third yeah. one still coming out, or is it out? No, it already came out. Oh, isn't okay. there a series yeah, on Lost, Netflix? It's called The Lost Something. Yeah. Was hidden it? hidden World. And there's like a Netflix a TV show? World. Yeah, there is a Netflix yeah. TV show. Oh, okay. So, I'm thinking of just going through all three movies. Well, How to Train Your Dragon Cinematic Universe. Yes. Yeah. Well, maybe not the, the television show. But no, I and mean, they all have good reputations. I, I like the first Yeah, I've one. heard they're all good. There is something else I wanted to watch and ask you guys about was some of the Star Wars animated stuff. The Clone oh, Wars. Uh, Clone Wars, Visions. Rebels. I've, I've seen none of it. Uh... Don't ask me. I have, com- you know me. I have complicated feelings. I'm not the best person. I so to know. I shouldn't watch them. My understanding I is the Clone no, Wars but... is okay. Mm-hmm. If but it gets into this whole problem we have with Star Wars, where if you like the Clone Wars, that also means you have to engage with the prequels, which raises problems. Yeah, because the it... prequels, the prequels, while some some elements of the prequels have merit, on the whole, the prequels suck. So the problem is, if you watch the Clone Wars, you also have to be like, okay, so that's canon, and I have to remember this, and midichlorians exist, which I hate, and all this other stuff. Yeah. 
I can personally accept prequels. I mean, not as like great cinematic experience, but as an overall, you know. Yeah, from what I like, fans of the clone, like there are a lot of fans that love the Clone Wars animated series. Um, I think, from what I understand, it gets better over time. It gets a little mm-hmm. more serious. A lot of the early episodes are more cartoony, both in animation and in like the yeah. the uh, tone. Um, I mean, that's look. It's all in Disney Plus as well, so it's like yeah. Have to go Apart from yeah. the best cut uh, is uh, Backstroke of the West. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Chinese dub Chinese of um, so, Revenge yeah, of the Sith. That's a movie. Yeah, that, put, that, that we should we should watch that on the projector. Which, which one, CD quality. Which one is it? Is it? It's Revenge of the it's Sith. Revenge, Revenge of the Sith. Sith. And they it's they, put, of the they, yeah. they put it in it's poorly and, translated. They put it in a uh, Chinese translator and then back to English. So <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, it's like the the dub titles, like the translation is so bad, and then they redubbed it back into English okay. and yeah. saying what. The bad trend, like yeah. bad Chinese yeah. translation. So they, dub- they double dubbed it. They dub- yeah. they dubbed the whole movie, oh. redubbed it yeah, it's, like, it's into really English, good. into this weird like mumbo um, jumbo. What's that legendary series. meme that, that that came from it? Um, Vader screams Anakin, at the end. I roughed I you or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you were my brother. <laughs> you were my brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I hate you. yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, I can yeah. watch that. I could watch that. Yeah. All right. Uh, look, as far as I've been watching, I've been watching a few good ones lately. Just uh, nothing too complicated. I watched Over the Top with Sylvester Stallone, which is a weird, weird movie. So it's, it's like an arm wrestling competition yeah, so movie, Yeah, so Over the right? Top refers to... If I'm arm wrestling Alan, yeah? Over the Top refers to if I get my fingers over his fingers, over the top, right? So it's like they start here, and it's all about the, st- the strategy of competitive arm wrestling, and it's getting Don't you your... start at that position? No, you start sort you start of set, You start yeah. like this, yeah. And the whole oh, thing like is trying to get over thims, the top. So, thi- like, you're, yeah. I'm trying to explain to the audience, like, your thumbs yeah. are interlocked. So if, I, if I'm arm wrestling your hand, hand has yeah, to sort cover of the other sort person's of, hand. One hand is over the, well, over the top, one hand is over the side. But you're trying to get your whole hand sort of over the top then so you can push that, them down. Oh, then you get the leverage. leverage. Okay, yeah. Okay. And it's like, that's what the movie title refers to. And it's also... A, a family also, drama. Is he also a truck driver or something? He's a truck driver. So, <laughs> he, uh, his ex, Mrs. and baby mama dies. Yeah. And so, he has to look after the kid, mm. even though the grandfather has custody. The, uh, the, 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 dying, go go. <laughs> the dying mother wants her to reconnect with... Uh, the, the, the boy's dying mother wants him to reconnect with his father. Yeah. And so, he's in some military school, and the kid is an absolute asshole, but that's mm. okay. Um and uh, Sylvester Stallone picks him up in his truck. And you would think most young kids, right, would be over the moon, a massive giant hauling truck, long hauling. How, how old is the kid? Like 10 or 11. Okay. Yeah. You think being picked up from school in that a massive long hauler for the kid. summer holidays yeah, that would be, be amazing, dope. right? Yeah. And the kid's like, I don't like it. It's too <laughs> big. It's blah, blah, blah. And he's annoying. The kid is like the worst part of the movie. He's like cliche, like bad he's bad cliche kid. military brat kind yeah. of kid mm. um, and the movie sponsored by brute beer ads absolutely everywhere on like every yeah. no every possible service is like a beer ad <laughs> it's really really the movie is weird man <laughs> and uh so and he lets the kid drive the truck and he has a sleep i mean it was the 80s so. it is the 80s <laughs> and then the kid and later in the year and later in the movie the kid drives himself to vegas to watch sylvester stallone arm wrestle and it's just like, what <laughs> am I watching? <laughs> it's extremely... Cocaine it's che- is a hell of a drug. Yeah, it's cheesy, but it's also peak 80s style. So I was yeah. like, it's fine. Those movies uh, are always fun. But like, there's seven different arm weight uh, arm wrestling Divisions. weight classes. Yeah. Oh, okay. And somehow Stallone has to wrestle like the biggest guy in the room. Because he's And he's Stallone. like the mountain... No, but he's like the, this guy's <laughs> like the mountain that rides, yeah? yeah? And Sylvester Stallone's like, all right, I guess you're my opponent. And it's like... Weight classes. Where do the weight classes go, man? Yeah. You shouldn't wrestle this dude. They shouldn't have mentioned weight classes if yeah. they were going to... Yeah, yeah, but that's always the case. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it could be like, I don't know, Jason Statham or whatever coming up against... Arnie. The, yeah. yeah, Arnie. And it'd be like, you know, it's always the whoever's um, the main but character. But, like, you know, obviously the core of the movie is really that sort of father-son relationship drama. Um, I really did like the movie, but I just found it very strange because somehow Sylvester Sloan's trying to win his kids' love and approval by winning an arm wrestling championship. Obviously. 
Ob- I mean, obviously. Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Isn't that how you do it's it? Like, I just, how you else know, are you going to get your son to respect you? I know. I just feel like there's more. I feel like there's more problems there. You know what I mean? It's like the kid obviously has. He's never met Sylvester Stallone before. Yeah. He doesn't know who he is. But it's like it's there's this thing in movies where it's like if you kill the bad guy, your your you your know family your, your family you. will respect you. And yeah. It's like, that's it's weird like, if it's you like, think about it. You know, obviously it makes the, sense in the movie, I guess. The kid's grieving his dead mum, and all you worrying and about like, is... Shut up and watch Mel Russell, boy. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, all, I'm going to beat this man to death, yeah, and all you're going to respect All you're worrying you about is arm wrestling. Yeah. It's like, no wonder your wife left you. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. That's it. Like, I'm sorry. That's the that's the Anor- that's the what Aronofsky we- version of Over <laughs> yeah. the Top, where he just loses everyone's respect because he keeps... Arm wrestling. <laughs> Maybe the arm wrestling was his way of dealing with grief. Maybe. Yeah. See, that's that's the cut. They oh, made. speaking of, can I hijack? Oh, and yeah. I'll do it later. Okay. Um, yeah. The next movie I watched recently is the Darjeeling Limited. I love that movie. Uh, so on the hundredth episode, I said Wes Anderson is probably my favorite director. Yeah. But I hadn't seen the Darjeeling Limited, and I got around to it. What an amazing movie! I, I love his. Like, obviously, it's a movie set in India. So that, uh, so it makes a lot of use of color. Yeah. Um, you know, all the sort of the train employees have like bright colorful uniforms. I mean, the all, train these, all these movies are colorful, colorful, but yeah, the actual. But like, you know, you know it uses India to its finest yeah. in terms of like his bright colors. Yeah. And the train itself is really cool. Yeah. Um, and his use of pan shots in this movie, like not specifically, like not long shots that are on one specific focus. Yeah. Like it'll be, it'll be, there'll be three or four different things happening on the train and it'll just all these movies Watching are pan. like that, yeah. yeah. But it's like and on, each compartment of the train, you yeah. See, and you like see it. he uses that in a lot of his movies, but with a particular focus on a train, it works so well because yeah. you've got everything that's happening all in different cap- compartments oh, yeah, on the all train. All the characters yeah. are segmented, and you get yeah. to see. So it's like you're seeing what's happening in one carriage with one brother, and then it sort of just pans over to the next one, and yeah. it's it just it's so effective. Yeah, it's a very good movie. I think I'm. I think when we were talking about about it on the hundredth episode, um, and I said I I can't remember if I said like. I'm a hipster when it comes to Wes Anderson because every you know everyone loves Royal Tenenbaums, everyone loves Rushmore, and people are just okay with Dala Jilling Limited, and people are people like Bottle Rocket, but not as much. But like I'm a hipster, like I like Bottle Rocket and Darjeeling oh, no, Limited I, more I messaged, than the other two. Yeah, I messaged Callum. I'm like, no, the Darjeeling Limited is legitimately a ten out of ten movie. Yeah, I yeah. love it. It's it's funny and it's also at the same time it's his kind of most serious one of his most serious live action movies uh, in a way I don't know because the brothers are incredibly damaged people yeah and but I mean that's all all his movies are like that and there's um, yeah dysfunctional people are a part yeah. of like they're like his thing yeah um, Adrian Brody's character is my favorite. He's, he's just so like good. popping pills and drinking all the time, and he's not the one with the injuries. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like he's just stealing Owen Wilson's pain meds all the time and like drinking. He's always intoxicated. It's amazing. Um, no, it's really good. I yeah. um, I enjoyed it, but it's kind of I'm like intentionally cheesy in the fact that they're carrying around their father's baggage the whole time. Yeah, it's and it's just like it's yeah, that's the and whole... like I'm just like I've like it's amazing, of course, but yeah. it's just like right at the end they're like throwing away his baggage. I'm yeah. just like. Low grade symbolism, yeah, that- <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah. le- they've let go of their father's baggage. Okay, yeah. Yeah. thank you. No, it works though. It movie. works, and we're all excited to see his new film, French Dispatch. But obviously, not bloody playing anywhere near us because we live in Australia and yeah. they don't play any good movies. We'll find a way. But yeah, we'll, we'll check. Well, it apparently, out. it's coming to streaming soon. So we'll just yeah, wait. So, um, and the other, th- the last thing I have to talk about is the Apple Plus TV show Invasion. Now, a lot it gets mixed reviews, and I, I think it's because this is an incredibly slow show. Mm. But for me, that's a good thing. So, it's an alien invasion story centered around, I don't know, three or four different stories concurrently. Yeah. But it's about how humanity would react in the event of an alien invasion. Mm. And what does that mean? So, it's like, it starts quite slow, you know. Humanity, people don't realize it's happening. And then there's certain incidents and things yeah. happen and you see the aliens. And it's just like, well, how would we know that we're being invaded by an alien species? How would we react? Mm. Um, it's about like radio signals and a lot of slow discovery that I thoroughly enjoyed. Mm. Of course, it's a too, it's slow, so it might not be for everybody. Yeah. And there's that whole kind of aspect of, you know, like obviously we're not alone and there's mysteries in space and stuff and there's a... A space like a space station that gets damaged and all that kind of stuff going on, and then there's the kids that are alone because 
like everyone's dying, the cities are burning. Yeah. And it's like they have to find a way home. And there's all these kinds of different stories going on concurrently. Mm. But it's like, it is quite slow. But I enjoyed that whole slow discovery. That basically, the show is slow discovery. I mean, yeah, we we always love when movies take their time and let things breathe. And and I, I think a lot of people don't like it because it's slow. And I, I understand and respect that. Yeah. But for me, that's what I want. I don't want like a show that's quick, 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 bang, 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 explosions. Yeah. I want, no, this is an alien invasion. It's like, let's think about it for a second. Mm. The only problem with that is like, is it going to get cancelled in a season? And then you'd be like, no, well, I was it, got, for all this. it got renewed, which I wasn't sure that it would because apparently it cost $200 million to make. I, yeah, think the ben- I, just, I don't think it's getting that good of a reception. The, the, either. the benefit of being, I guess, an Apple original is that they don't have that many. So I guess that the ones they've got, they want to build momentum with. I really want to watch Foundation, but apparently it's not that good. It's yeah. not. Apparently, I've heard there's not a good ad- adaptation. Yeah, but even. even but it's, yeah. all, it's one of those properties that apparently is very difficult to adapt oh, anyway. Oh, it's impossible to Because uh, I've never those. read the books, yeah. but their reputation is that they're very cerebral. Yeah. Yeah, which no, is, it, the more cerebral the text, the harder it is to translate to yeah, film. No, it'd be, so, it'd be really hard to adapt those. Oh, one, one criticism I did have with Invasion is all the advertising is uh, Invasion starring Sam Neill. The dude's in it for half an hour and then he dies. I didn't even know he was in it. Yeah. Well, if he, uh, he dies in the first half an hour, man. No spoiler for that. So they were trying to sell it on They were trying to, If you watch all the trailers, it's got Sam Neill and it's like, Sam Neill, the invasion. And it's like, no, the man dies half an hour in the first episode, all right? Maybe he comes back. No, he doesn't come back. I've watched it. He's dead. <laughs> Maybe what it's if he's an team. alien. The aliens use him as a puppet. Yeah, yeah it's weekend, like many men, men in black style. At, he's just like, I want you the water. Weekend at Bernie yeah. style. <laughs> but no, so like it, it's good. It's like I can see it's almost TV making by committee in the fact that you've got the soldier who's like the war element of the alien invasion, right? Yeah. He's like on the ground with the guns. The military response. You got the kids. The kids just trying to struggle to survive. You've yeah. got a Japanese lady who's um, trying to communicate with the space station, and it's like all the sort of radio frequency cool stuff that, like the aliens sort yeah. of put out to the world. And you've got like the um, the family. Mm. just trying to navigate from like one part of the US to another trying to escape mm. you know danger On the power of India. so you you do have all of those kinds of we'll say tropey aspects where you've got these sort of we'll call the sort of your normal kind of yeah. alien stories or yeah, your dystopian stories. stories yeah um, but it tells the story well enough and I enjoyed it fair enough Look, I reckon <laughs> that's all I've got for this week but we might go to a very quick ad break before we hear from James you are back on the Tuesday review. It's a review roundtable this week. And, All right, uh, right before we get to James, mm. there's one more thing I want to discuss. Yeah. We, I've said it many times, we're going to have to have a Steven Seagal special. <laughs> Not to appreciate him, because Lord knows he doesn't deserve that. Oh, yes, because we showed Alan the, uh, we showed Alan the uh, so, on Deadly Ground, on Deadly ground slap, ground, fight. Oh, slap, slap fight. fight. So where he's pretending to be a Native American individual. <laughs> um, he, he really likes taking on different races. But, uh, yeah, he basically slaps a, uh, a white man into submission and uh, tries to change his mind on racism by slapping his hands. What does it take to what does it change, take to change a man? <laughs> I need to. And he's, he just breaks down and crying. It's like one of the most amazing moments in cinema history. <laughs> what, what actually sparked this was um, my favorite was the anybody seen Richie scene from Out for Justice uh. where he's pretending to be a um, New York... Uh, American Italian this time, and he's got that bit of a Brooklyn accent. Yeah, so we only seen Richie, <laughs> <laughs> Richie <laughs> Bobby Lupo, yeah. and he like basically beats up an entire bar full of people. Like out of all the like <laughs> action heroes, he's the worst. Like he he just or, why or he's, when he's running he the best. Uh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I think we talked about on Deadly Ground once, and it was like. HD, but they just was like remaster from the VHS tape or something. It was really strange. Oh, on the streaming, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, this is what I'm gonna propose: is we'll do like two episodes. One will be his like we'll call it 90s and 80s movies. His decent right? movies. Yeah. Before we got fat and bald, well, he's already. <laughs> but then we'll go his, <laughs> his like proper fat and bald era, like 2010 stuff, <laughs> yeah. where he's just yeah. not he's just a fat guy. Yeah, he's like, just a fat bald guy around corners. Can't even hold a gun. Yeah, can't even hold a gun properly. <laughs> and then you know his military sergeant has to be like an 80, 90 year old guy because he's you know you can't have somebody younger than you. So we'll we'll do like two episodes. Want to be on like the new stuff? Want to be on the old stuff? I think <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, I'd be down for that. So we'll uh, we'll have to prepare some movies, and uh, I propose that we do that sometime in yeah, the future. That would be fun. Sounds good to me. Moving on to James. All right. Um, well, 
when uh, Nathan was talking about over the top and, you know, the wife died or whatever and, you know, we were joking about how, you know, it doesn't really take that part seriously because it's like an 80s action movie or whatever. Um, it reminded me I saw Pig, the Nicolas Cage Oh, movie. no spoilers. I no, no, I won't spoil it. anything. But I just, I wanted to mention because I'm like, that, that movie is, deal, like, is about grief and like loss and... And truffle pigs. And truffle pigs. <laughs> and dealing with that. And it's it's actually really, really good. Yeah, I can't wait. And I got it on Blu-ray. Nicolas Cage, yeah, Nicolas Cage is really good in it. And is, is he like like Nicolas Cage good no, or actually good? No, no. It's dramatic role good. Actually good. good. Okay, and, cool. and he, he never... Because the, the problem... We were talking about this last week off air. How people... people the only reason people know Nicolas Cage is as a meme. Yeah. Like he's the crazy guy who yells kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... But they don't know he's actually a good actor. Oh, man. And he yeah. has made many good films. Leaving Las Vegas, Raising Arizona. Yeah, Adaptation's one Adaptation. of my favorite ones. But um, this movie is... It's a great movie overall, but also it's a great Nicolas Cage performance because he just... He plays it so... Yeah. You know, like there's no... Trying it, to play it straight. Not in, straight. In way, I mean, he never he never goes full Nicolas Cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He restrains that makes, it. It's restrained. It's yeah, a restrained yeah. performance. Yeah, that's what I meant. But anyway, yeah, it's a really good movie. Check it out. Um, look, we haven't done one of these in a long time because of lockdown, and we we did miss a lot of big movies um, yeah. that came out. We didn't get to talk about. Um, and after the <laughs> lockdown, I kind of wasn't sure about the direction of the show. Um, but so we won't go back and like we won't go back and review all those ones and we'll probably miss a few of the big ones over the next few weeks because there's a lot of stuff coming out. Um, so yeah, I think we'll end it up. I think, uh, there's one I wanted to mention. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, just go ahead. Remembered. I can't remember if we talked about it or not. I don't think we did. Cause I think this was during the pandemic yeah. era, but, um, Bill and Ted Face the Music came out and yeah. I loved it so much that I bought it on Blu-ray because mm. I was like, we could watch it for free. Yeah. But I'm like, I want to actually support this film because yeah. we all love Bill and Ted. And when it came out, we had no way to watch it. I had to, I'm pretty sure I had to download it and, and that because it didn't get released over here, at least not in the same time I think everyone because, else got yeah, it. Because we were in lockdown, it was supposed to get released, yeah. but then it didn't. Um, and then, I don't know. See, I thought I'd quickly mention, uh, give a small review of Bill and Ted Face the Music. Yeah. Uh, we've got time. Um, well, I mean, that's the opposite of what I just said we weren't going to do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. I'll, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it short and sweet. Don't no, worry. no, go ahead. Um, it actually turned out to be kind of a heartfelt uh, comedy about what it means to be not parents, not like Jane Silent Bob style. Yeah. Um, but it's more of like the We handing. didn't get to talk about Jane Silent Bob reboot either. Yeah, I know. Yeah, um, that's a whole it's, We seem to be in an interesting age where. Like the comedy of the '90s seems to be trying to hand off the torch, not not literally, but in the terms of the story universes, it's all about parents and sons or sons well, and daughters. I in mean, terms of because everything now is about reboots and sequels. Yeah, they're just taking things that happened ten, twenty, thirty years ago and then rehashing them and rehashing them. And to do that, they're doing the <laughs> quite literally for the, Jan Song Bob. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So they're doing the handing of the torch or whatever, which but I, most I th- of the time doesn't work out. I feel like I worked with Bill and Ted. Did you end up watching Bill and yeah, Ted Face I, Music? Yeah, during, I think during, not the last lockdown, maybe the lockdown before, I can't even remember anymore. It's all one blur, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, got, um, I got the original film on 4K. The second film hasn't been released on 4K, so I got the Blu-ray and I got... Face the music on 4K, and then I watched them all back to back. Um, and I enjoyed Face the Music, um, yeah. but you can tell like the budget obviously didn't have a very big budget, and there were a, there was a lot of retready kind of bits. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall it was it was enjoyable, and it wasn't a complete shit show like you'd think it probably could end up being. Yeah, I enjoyed the performances of. Um uh, gosh, a Billy and Theodora. Oh yeah, the daughters. Yeah, they are good. Um, I I did like the the I, performances were on point. Yeah, I like that's something about the movie as well. Is like it's Bill and Ted movie, but it's about like I kind of I like the daughters more. I would have yeah. maybe even liked to see more of. Them. Yeah, I, I actually said after watching them, like I'd actually like a film about the daughters' adventures. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that so I liked um, Jan Bob reboot. Mm. But I feel like Bill and Ted does a better job of of 
like concluding like the arcs. Bill and Ted might have been over better, overall better than Reboot. Reboot was probably funnier, but I think Bill, mm. and, Bill and Ted... <laughs> Bill and Ted, I think, to me, satisfies uh, yeah. my need for the, the stories to be resolved. Because yeah. I did enjoy... Uh, the highlight for me was um, them being in Dave Grohl's house. I thought that was hilarious. That was funny, yeah. Um, there was a deleted scene that did make the movie where they they go to a prison and meet prison Bill and Ted. No, and, that like, was in the movie. With the death metal song? I uh, don't remember the song, but they do go to the They do go to the planet... Um, they do yeah. go to the planet. I don't think the song was in the actual yeah. movie. Because I was, was disappointed. In the I thought that was hilarious. Are you talking about when they're all muscly? Yeah, and they're yeah, in prison? yeah, yeah. They, yeah there, there was. There was. Know, there's they, like a death metal song in they, the trailer. They do. And they cut it out. Oh, and I was super disappointed. They do yeah. hear some and like yeah, they they do play a song for there's a, normal there's a great Bill joke, and Ted, and yeah. it's like a black metal song or something. Yeah, there's uh. a great joke where I think either Bill or Ted goes uh, heavy. But nice, as if like being like really nice about it, and then like, yeah, like, I think like, it's, it's like I don't think it's what we're after, but cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, and then, anyway, I, th- I was disappointed that wasn't in the film. Yeah, um, I hate it when they show things in trailers that aren't in the film. Yeah, especially if it's good. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention Bill and Ted because I love that franchise, and I'm glad that we ended up they ended up actually getting to make a third one because a lot of franchises don't get passion projects, I should say, don't get yeah. that final send off. Just before we do end it, mm. um, on, on this sort of subject, but rounding off stories, all that kind of mm. stuff. Have you, cause of the, I guess the, uh, the goodwill and love that, uh, the karate kids been getting through Cobra Kai, they've re-released the, uh, three oh, karate kid, original um, karate kid movies in the Daniel Lusso trilogy in a 4k box set. Mm. Um, have you got it yet? I, I ordered it. It hasn't arrived yet. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I have read, uh, I have seen a, a video review. Apparently, the second Karate Kid movie, the 4K remastering is godlike. Apparently, it's almost reference quality 4K. It is. Hmm. It is. Apparently, from what I've seen, I haven't watched it yet. Hmm. But apparently, from what I've seen, it is like one of the best available. It is like it, no, like just one of the. It's one of the best. Apparently, it's like up there with the best 4K discs. It is like pristine. Just the second movie. Just the second the, movie. The third movie aged like apparently they did their best with the third, but the actual film yeah. quality wasn't up as good. Mm. But the second one, it was pristine. And so apparently, hmm. the second, the Karate Kid Part Two, yeah. Yeah, is yeah, yeah, some yeah. of the best 4K money can buy. In terms of actual picture quality well, I and think everything else, I think it's nice that they got they remastered the the original trilogy for for yeah, people. Well, I mean, looking movies, yeah, yeah. But, uh, and they're great. They're all all they're, three of them are great. Yeah. I mean, we, like people. I don't mean, like we're the Sims, second, yeah, we're Sims, <laughs> but like people don't like the second, third, but we we, we always do. yeah we always. Uh, yeah, I just thought I'd mention. I just thought I mentioned that it, it's good that we do live in a world now where at least we because for a long time we couldn't even buy the th- yeah. s- third well, one on Blu-ray. It's like yeah, it's well, like I had to import the yeah. second. The third and fourth one I from managed, Germany. I mean, I managed I to get, I think, a double pack of one and two at some yeah. point. And the third one was just like, nah, I can't get in Australia, bro. So well, it's, yeah. it's like it what James DVD. says. It's like, it, it's important to collect physical media because yeah. especially with streaming, you never know when something's going to be taken yeah. down. As, yeah. So it's, it's it's nice that they released it for us easily available. Stre- I mean, streaming, quality streaming is pretty decent for the most part, but yeah, never. The, the beat never, rate's always much better yeah. on your disc. Um, but even although, just the, the notion of owning something, yeah. you can just put in a player and then watch it. Yeah, although all the Marvel shows on Disney Plus look really uh, they're cool. all Everything on Disney Plus is pretty good. It's yeah. uh, either very high bit rates or Dolby Vision pictures, and it's like, it's, it's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I just thought I'd mention the fact that that new box set is amazing. Yeah. Um, the packaging it, is really the nice. The packaging's nice. And it's good just to have the Karate Kid thriving. Because honestly, when Cobra Kai came out on YouTube, we loved it. But was its future certain? No. Yeah. We, we talked about it when it moved yeah. to Netflix. It's like now everyone can watch it. Yeah. Before. But it's also risky because Netflix cancels things. Yeah. yeah. But I, now, I don't think they would have bought it if. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it's a low budget show. But um, yeah, the next season comes out very soon. And uh, well, I'm sure we'll eventually do some. We'll talk about it. Yeah. At least. In, in January, probably it's do it. Terry Silver's so. back, baby. <laughs> there is back yeah. now yes. we just need Mike Barnes <laughs> uh, well, well, like, yeah now we just need Mike Barnes who's the one who's always on Twitter being like please yeah, let me please. join in <laughs> and they're just like no <laughs> and they had, to, they had to win they had to win is it Ian Thomas Ian Griffith the actor I'm not sure I don't know yeah, they had to win him back because he was probably retired and they were just like please oh who Terry Silver yeah, he was probably retired oh, and they were okay. just like Please, Daddy. <laughs> like, if we can't round yeah. out Cobra that's, Kai that's without having so, like him. I yeah. read an article with him actually. He said it was really interesting because he he was basically a full time screenwriter, and he didn't really want to act anymore. And they he said to them, um, 
I need a reason. Like Terry Silver needs mm. a reason to come back. Yeah. And apparently every question he had, they had a perfectly reasonable, excellent answer for. So he, he said that the fact that they've thought about the character so much in the yeah. universe, he was like, he's happy to do it because he, he thinks that there's going to be a payoff. Like his character's not going to, his character's the villain, obviously. Yeah. But he thinks that there's enough interesting facets to that character that make him want to come back. Yeah. So he said it's gonna. He said the audience is gonna be really happy. with Oh it. yeah, and the fact, dude, that the fact well, the dude's an actual still like a competing black belt in real life. I'm like, that's yeah, cool. you know, he's gonna kick ass. Yeah. In the yeah. Show. Well, I mean, if the last three seasons have been any yeah. indication, is like the writers know what they're doing. Yeah. They have a love for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they're hitting a lot of cliche beats, but it's like it were It all works. Um, it's so enjoyable. It's one of the only shows you can sit and just. In that's really i'm not really assume, enjoy i'm not really yeah. a binge watcher but i could sit and just watch the whole season yeah. in one sitting but easily. i mean just like like because we we lost dark, dark crystal yeah um <laughs> and that still hurts yeah but it's like it's one of the only like really just fun positive enjoyable shows yeah oh, we'll talk about it we'll talk yeah about we'll, we'll talk about out. it when it when it comes out there's yeah. lots of movies coming out lots of tv shows coming out we'll, so we'll talk about what we can we, but yeah as yeah, the christmas we're gonna break comes we'll see just because of time and yeah. work and all sort all sorts of crazy stuff but, you know these but, are the things that if we really really enjoy we can do it in a review, a review round table yeah we'll, not, ma- you know, we'll, we'll mention yeah, them we'll mention them at and, some and point. like i said there's a lot we didn't get to talk about um over the lockdown and stuff that we skipped um and that we probably won't talk about, but it might come up one day, or we could yeah. always do it another time. Yeah, there's yeah. there's no no, no hurry, no yeah, rules. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, I I think that's all about. Yeah, uh, that's, that's all about it. Uh, Alum's retreated to the other studio to get ready for his a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank as you. always. Um, thank you for listening. We will keep you up to date, definitely, about yep. uh, our show's transition from Shout Engine to likely Anchor or something like and that. Yeah, and what, uh, somewhere um, else. Uh, yeah, we look. We might be. We might have a break over Christmas. We might not. We'll we'll keep our. We'll mm-hmm. keep you updated through the socials. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody, thank you for listening. Uh, please like and share the Tuesday Review Facebook page, the Twitter, the Instagram. Um, don't like anything on the Shout Engine page. <laughs> can you? I don't think you I don't can. know if you can, but don't go to the Shout Engine page. <laughs> Rate, review, and subscribe oh, yeah. to our iTunes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think anyone goes to no. Shout Engine anyway. <laughs> it's on Spotify. Um, yeah. yeah, just uh, thank you for listening, everybody. And I think we'll be back uh, over the new Christmas slash New Year break. But we we'll should see be back how next falls. week for Spider-Man. Yeah. And then, and but then, the week after, we might take a break. We might come in. And then week after that. We'll see how we go. Yeah, because it's it's the way Christmas and New Year's Year's falls, yeah. And there's like 100 movies coming out over that period. So we'll We'll see how we go. Alrighty, everybody. That's it for tonight. Thank you for listening. Adios, cousins.